Do you want to learn a quick and easy way to make hard candies in your own kitchen? Well today on WTF we're going to show you how to make hard candies in even a sugar-free version. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Now here on WTF, every week we cover unique ingredients, techniques, and do something fun to get you started on your culinary adventures in your own kitchen. So remember, ring the bell and subscribe, and that way you'll get notified of our content. It comes out every single Tuesday. And this week we're going to be focused on how do you make hard candies? which I think is a really fun thing that you can do at home, you can make your own, and we're gonna show you exactly how to do it and what to watch out for to make sure that you don't run into any issues. And Scott, do you wanna maybe start off with a little bit of the background of how exactly are hard candies produced? Sure, so hard candies are produced by heating sugar to a specific temperature. So you're gonna melt it down, heat it to a specific temperature. Uh, so there's many different stages of sugar and around between 290 and 300 is where you wanna do uh, your hard candies because you're not getting to that caramelization point. You're not getting to the point where it's going to have that kind of uh, almost like toasty, roasty flavor. Right. So you want to bring it right to the point where it's going to be a hard crack, but before it starts to turn into caramel. And that's around 290 degrees to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And there are some issues that you can run into there. Uh, so uh, a little example right here is if you get there and let's say it starts pulling in sugar crystals from the side of the pan which we're going to show in a little demo here okay. uh, it's going to crystallize and it'll seize up so this is the first thing that people will see if something goes wrong but okay. there's ways to get around that okay and what exactly is happening when um, someone says, oh, my sugar has crystallized. So it's basically seizing. It's grabbing a, a, like a stray crystal of sugar off the side of the pan, and there's a way to prevent that, and I'll show you it in the demo. Okay. Uh, it's a, grabbing one of those stray crystals, and it's just causing a chain reaction throughout the entire thing to just set the entire mixture, even if it is hot. So this was hot. This was about 290 degrees okay. when we did this. And uh, just for demo purposes, it's very simple. If I throw a little tiny bit of sugar, like say if I go, oh, that's not enough, and I try to add more sugar to my mixture, mm -hmm. it's gonna, just gonna seize up immediately. So okay. you don't wanna do that. Once your sugar's in there, you wanna do as little to it as possible uh, to prevent this. But like I said, there's ways to prevent it using other ingredients. Yeah, well, let's see, you know, kind of what exactly are we doing sure. today here? So we're gonna make a, a quick hard candy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's very simple to do at home. So what I have here is basic table sugar. Uh, just the granulated sugar that you would find in your in almost every household, right? And then I have here is glucose DE42. So this is a glucose um, uh, solids that is a specific amount. So DE42, we did an entire episode yep. on it. You can watch it there. And this is an invert sugar. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding an invert sugar. And what this is, it's an aid to help it prevent crystallizing. So invert sugar uh, is known for being able to hold on to a little bit more moisture, okay. but also help prevent the crystallization of the rest of the ingredients. So grab yeah, and if you do want to learn more about the 42, we did do an episode on it. The link will be in the description below mm -hmm. so you can get all that information and then also how to um, convert your glucose D to powder into a glucose D to syrup, yes. which is how it's most commonly used. Yeah, so. Uh, if you wanted to do that, obviously you can make the DE42 syrup and just add it directly in here. Let's say you made it for another recipe and you have it, you mm -hmm. can add it right in here. Uh, but for this recipe, we just added the powder directly in mm -hmm. and we will just let it make its own syrup within this and in the process prevent the sugar from crystallizing. Yeah. So if you happen to have a control freak, which is a, a really great tool, mm -hmm. it comes with this little probe. If not, you're going to use something like a... Uh, um, just okay. an instant read thermometer. Okay. You can find one of these at just about any store uh, and it's quick. You can put it in there. It'll let you know the temperature right away. You mm -hmm. can use a regular candy thermometer as well. Okay. So <clears throat> in the mixing of this, and I'm just going to turn it on so I can have it go to the right temperature. Mm -hmm. And in the mixing of just the sugar and the DE42, you can see around the edges, and I can turn this, Around these edges, see all these kind of stray crystals just from yep. the mixing process. You're gonna take a wet brush and you're just going to wipe those down. 
Okay. So because it's just that's water. what's going to cause the crystallization yes. if we yep. leave it. Got it. Even though we have the DE42 mm -hmm. in there, you can't be too careful. You know, you don't want to have to do something twice. Mm -hmm. And so usually when you get to this crystallization point, you're not going to be able to uh, bring it back to life. You can add more water, but usually after one or two tries, it's not going to be able to kind of come back into that syrup. It'll just be spent at that point. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So there are other ingredients that go into making hard candies, mm -hmm. right? So this right here is uh, the basic sugar part of the mixture. Okay. Uh, generally in hard candies, there's some sort of acid. And this we're going to add citric acid. But if I add the citric acid now, it'll kind of expedite the process of that caramelization. Oh. So if I add it in there now and I start bringing it up to around 290, it'll start to get that yellowing color. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. I want a crystal clear sugar like this without any yellowing. So uh, that's why I don't add that until just at the end, right when I add my flavor drops, and I add in the um, citric acid and mix it up and then I pour it into molds. Yeah, and speaking of flavor drops, you know, one of the things that makes this really fun is the fact that you can, unlike, you know, buying like Jolly Ranchers at mm -hmm. the store where you're limited to like five, six different flavors, you really have the flexibility here of just making it any flavor you want using our flavor drops. And we never really did an episode <laughs> about flavor drops, um, so we figured this might be a good opportunity to talk about a little bit about, you know, what is a flavor drop, what's in here, and how do you use it? Yeah, so mm -hmm. we use flavor drops for many different things. So there's tons of different recipes. I'm sure there's going to be some down in the description below. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a great way to get some either, uh, you know, intense flavor or aroma into your uh, whatever existing recipe you're making. Obviously mm -hmm. here, we're just mixing up sugar, so we need to get a lot of flavor into these to make you want to eat them, right? So uh, the flavor drops come in perfect here because it's just one little dram mm -hmm. per entire recipe. Okay. You pour it right in. Now there's some things to watch out for is that not all of them are colored. Okay. Some of them are, are glycerin based, some of them are alcohol based, some of them are uh, oil based. So this one here is the grape and I really like it because it comes pretty much pre-colored. Mm -hmm. So I pour it in there, it's going to color my entire batch and then I can just mix it, you know, pour it into my molds, whatever I'm doing and I don't have to worry about it. Other ones that are just oil based, let's say like lime, it's right. completely clear. So if I put it in there, maybe you put a few drops of food coloring in. That's completely on you if you want that. If you want it to be kind of like a little Russian roulette of uh, flavors, <laughs> then you can put them all in there. Well, we even have like too. fun flavors, like a really sour one mm -hmm. and, and like a hot pepper, uh, even into like black pepper. So you can get you know, mix and match your flavors and come up with something specific to what you're doing. But we've also done other cool things like mix it into oil and then make powders out of it. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different cool things you can do with them. And you can see we have over 50 different flavors that yep. you can choose from and you can build upon. But uh, they're really used, the initial use that we had for these is with our culinary crystals. Yep. And our mm -hmm. culinary crystals are like our own mm -hmm. kind of style of pop rocks that you coat with a little bit of fat and then one of these um, flavors and you can customize your own uh, culinary crystals pop rocks. Yeah, and some, you know, a lot of the other uses people use them for, you can even use them for something as simple as flavoring water. Yeah. Right? So you want to make a flavored water just to make it a little tastier. Obviously flavoring all kinds of candies, not just hard candies. I think, do we put them into ice cream? I don't even remember. Uh, I put them into so many different things. I like know. I said, you'd probably have to look in the description below to see all of them. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. if you go to the flavor drops, uh, you know, part, it, if we put it into something, it'll be there on, on the website as well. So uh, there, there's a lot of different things that we put them in. We really like to use them just because it gives you a, a little bit of extra aromatics to your recipe and it's mm -hmm. a nice kind of fresh flavor. So we're getting very close to our temperature here. I'm about 250 to 270, depending on where I put the thermometer. So I want to make sure it gets up to that 290. Okay. But for uh, demo purposes, I'll let this come up just a little bit more so we can see the rest of the process. Yeah. So very simply, you can see it, it's molten here. There's no crystals of sugar around the outside, so they're not gonna jump, jump in there and you know, seize up my entire mixture. Mm -hmm. At this point, I would add my citric acid. So I'm just gonna add it in and mix it up. Okay. And I'll turn off the heat. Right. If you don't turn off the heat or you don't remove it from the heat, uh, let's just say it is at that 300. Around that point, it could start to turn, you know, um, kind of caramel. Okay. So, and then I'll take my flavor drops and I'll pour them right in. Actually, this is a good little thing. You may not be able to see this, but see a few little kind of yellowing spots in there? That's from the citric yep. acid starting to caramelize it. So, 
Okay. And I think just luckily with the grave, that'll just kind of cover that up. Like yeah, that, that little, little bit, one. that's fine. Right. It's going to happen a little bit. So mm -hmm. when I mix in the grape and whenever you add in your color, you don't want the entire thing to be that kind of caramel because the caramel does have a, uh, you know, a pretty distinct flavor. And if it gets too far, then it tastes burnt and nobody wants burnt sugar. Okay. Great. So I have my grape in here. And then you can take it, I um, obviously let this cool a little bit before I pour it directly into my molds. Mm -hmm. If you have, you know, uh, a stainless steel table or something like that, you can pour it onto there and you can work with the sugar. You mm -hmm. can pull it and make it really kind of glossy, ribbon candy, all different types of things you can make with this. We decided to make, you know, just hard candies and lollipops. Okay. So uh, really you can do all sorts of different fun things with this. It's just an easy way to make hard candy that okay. tastes like uh, the hard candy that you get in the store. All right, so for folks at home who don't have a stainless steel surface, you know, what do you recommend they put it on? Not their granite countertop. Yeah, right? I wouldn't put okay. it onto a granite countertop. Right. No, mm -hmm. I would leave it in the, in the pan, just on like a, a burner that is not on, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it'll eventually start to get solid around the sides. You're gonna wanna have some sort of glove that you can, you know, handle this with, unless you're just pouring it into like a high temp mold like mm -hmm. we have here. These absolutely work perfectly right out of here after about, you know, five minutes of cooling. Mm -hmm. You can then either spoon it in or you can pour it in gently. I would just put it onto a sheet pan or some sort of metal pan. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way you're not, you know, heating something up like your granite countertops that right. could potentially a crack or, or just do some damage. You don't want to do that. Yeah. And kind of while we're waiting for that to cool, one of the other things we, uh, we wanted to offer people who want to do this is a um, sugar, I don't want to say sugar free, but a sugar alternative for yes. people, you know, who might be watching about their glycemic index and things like that. What do you recommend for a sugar alternative? Great. So that's these? a great question because we did make mm -hmm. a, a sugar alternative. This will be right on the recipe. So when you get the hard candy, you'll be able to see a regular recipe and then okay. you'll be able to see one that is a uh, low glycemic index. So mm -hmm. uh, if you're diabetic or you're just watching your sugar intake, mm -hmm. uh, you can then use, you know, eat these, uh, to not have to worry about that. So we used isomalt and xylitol. And isomalt has like a lower sweetness than table sugar. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to increase it with the xylitol, which is about 90% as sweet as table sugar. Okay. And it works the exact same way. You put it in there with the water. The only thing that is different is that with these, you heat them up to a much higher temperature. Okay. Because if you don't heat them up to a much higher temperature, they, uh, they don't react the exact same way as sugar. So this comes to about 375 before you can, and it's not going to caramelize because it is, it's a different type of sugar. Um, it's a sugar alcohol uh, that is being used there, so you don't have to worry about that uh, deep, rich caramelization, that okay. Maillard reaction, uh, when you're doing something with the ice, isomalt and the xylitol. Okay, so. yeah, and if you do want to watch an entire video from start to finish of Scott making these, they will be available uh, depending on what platform you're watching this on, either later in the week or you might already have seen it. So these, this will all be there to kind of see the entire demo. And as always, all the recipes will be in the links in the description below. Yeah, and I'm just going to put one into the mold, show you how easy it is. See, this is still molten, right? So if I just take it, just simply pour it right into the mold and let them sit. One thing you do, obviously, if it is a humid environment, you want to store these, you know, sealed up mm -hmm. so that they're not um, exposed to the air or whatever because mm -hmm. it's sugar. So it's still going to kind of pull in that moisture from the air uh, regardless. So just make sure that they're sealed up. If you want to wrap them, you absolutely can wrap there them just in a little bit of paper. <laughs> That'll be there forever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you want to wrap them in a little bit of paper or, or some plastic, obviously let them cool completely, but you could absolutely do that. Yeah, and we have some here. Are these any particular flavor? Yeah, okay. so these right here are the watermelon flavor. Ooh, uh, okay. They're kind of, they kind of go with them. So, you know, apple, uh, blue is blueberry. So I would go with the watermelon flavor. Right, right here is fine. A so sticky. it's a little, yeah, it's yeah, a little it's humid a little here humid in the kitchen. Here. So, so the lollipops work great. So <laughs> the, right. the, the watermelon flavored lollipops are perfect. Cool. So, yeah. All right, here we go. That would be a little bit easier so you can, you don't okay. have to talk It's with summer the here rancher. in Maine, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is super good. It, ta it tastes exactly like a Jolly Rancher. I don't know if we're allowed to say I'm saying it anyway. <laughs> Whatever. It tastes yeah. like a Jolly Rancher. It tastes good. Yeah. Mm. So, so that's, that's pretty, pretty much, much it. it. Oh, oh jinx. said it. Okay, Thanks so from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chef's, tips and tricks, and more.
And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. <laughs>